All right, everybody, welcome to your very first, for some of you, uh, Muskingum Valley ESC opening day. For a lot of us, this is uh, uh, one of many opening days, and this one's awfully special, again, because we're doing it virtually, and we're all here together. Um, right now, it looks like I've got about 166 friends signed in, so I'm super excited to kick things off with you this morning. Um, one quick note. We're going to do just a little bit of housekeeping, housekeeping first to get us started. So let me start there. A few items just that I wanted to touch on before we get rolling. If you haven't already, please head to that chat, select everyone in the chat, and let us know that you're here by signing in with your name and your department number or department name uh, in the chat. And we are so glad that you're here. Uh, this session is being recorded, so if you're not able to remember something that uh, is shared today, we've got a couple of great videos. We will record this and we will post it on our website at mvesc.org so that you can go back out and revisit that, or you can share it with someone that maybe wasn't able to attend today. We're also going to send this recording link and the PowerPoint slides out to you following today's session. Just a note, you are all in listen only mode. Um, just because we have so many folks, we do it in a webinar format versus a, a Zoom meeting format. Um, that way we can ensure we've got good uh, mic sound and good bandwidth by keeping everybody else's cameras off. So your microphones and cameras have been disabled. For optimal viewing today, if you wanted to, if you're familiar or comfortable enough in Zoom, head to your view settings in the upper right hand corner of your screen and select speaker view. And this is going to allow you to see the slides and the speaker at the same time. Uh, we won't have time to answer questions live today, but we do encourage you to place any questions or insights that you might have into that chat box. We'll take all those questions and get answers back out to you using our uh, email distribution list next week. And our wonderful moderator, Shelly Tolliver, is here. She's monitoring the chat. Um, feel free to engage with Shelly throughout today's session. And last but not least, we're estimating today's session will last about two hours. So buckle up, uh, today's presenters, you're gonna see some familiar faces as well as some new faces. And I will get those introduced to you right here. We'll start off with our superintendent, Lori Snyder Lowe, former MVESC superintendent and today's keynote speaker, Dr. Jim Mahoney. Yours truly, Amy Luby, hey guys, I'm the project manager and grant writer here. Lindsay Rayner, curriculum director. Adam Copeland, Student Services Supervisor, Danielle Duvall, Assistant Treasurer, Bill Arnett, Communications Coordinator, Kathy Morgan, LPDC Lead, and Kate Brenner, Student Services Coordinator. So in two hours, we've got a lot to get covered today, including Magic Dragons. Uh, this is an interesting topic. I can't wait to hear more about it from our friend, uh, Dr. Mahoney. We will get an ESC update from Lori. We're gonna take care of some business basics with some of our friends in um, student services and fiscal and communications. And we'll also celebrate employees who have reached milestones with MVESC this year. So without further ado, please welcome Lori Snyder Lowe. Good morning. I'm excited to be here today. I love the music. I love everybody getting in the chat and talking about, oh, it's my first day, or I'm from the New Lex team, and all the great things you guys are saying in the chat room. That's really exciting, and it really pumps us up to, to get off to a great start. So thank you for all of all you're doing there. I have the pleasure of introducing Dr. Jim Mahoney. He's a great friend of mine, and he's also a great friend of the Muskingum Valley ESC, as you know or should know, maybe need to know, he was a, uh, our superintendent a few years ago. He's also a lifelong educator. He the, was the first director of Battelle for Kids. He's currently the executive in residence for the Voinovich School for Leadership and Public Service at Ohio University. He's definitely our friend here at the MVSC. He's near and dear to our hearts. Welcome today, Jim. Okay, all right. Uh, <clears throat>
Dr. Mahoney, I am trying to get your video up. It might have asked you to. Um, what video? Uh, just your face. Oh. So okay. hang on one second here. I'm trying to get back to panelists and. Well, let's don't ruin it for them. Thank well, you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I've selected ask to start video. So hopefully if you can start your video, um, if it, down in the left-hand corner, it might say stop video or start video. For some reason, I'm not able to turn. There you are. Awesome. Okay, done there. Wow, very good. Thank you. All right. First of all, I want to say it's nice to be seen and not viewed. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, I'm delighted to be with people. And while I can't really see you, uh, my goal was to give you some things that you might think about. And we can spend uh, a few minutes this morning uh, remembering and laughing and thinking about this next year. Uh, I had a friend of mine, a superintendent of Virginia, who called me yesterday and he said, you remember how last year I called you and said it was the worst year ever? He said, it turns out I only missed it by a year. Now, <clears throat> I don't want to be cynical, but I want to start by saying this sincerely. I want to thank Lori and all of you for what I think this last year was your finest performance in perhaps the darkest days ever. Someday when the history of education is written, I cannot imagine that in looking back, people won't see this as the most difficult circumstances ever. <clears throat> and yet you made all the adaptations necessary and lots of stories to connect with kids and uh, to make yourself known and to, in some cases feed kids and a whole variety of things. So on behalf of the thousands of kids, who really suffered uh, in many different ways. I wanna thank you for all the efforts you did to reach out to them. Now, I wanna, I, I'm gonna start with a common message. And I don't know if Barb Hansen, one of your board members is on here or not, but this was really her idea. Uh, years ago, <clears throat> when John Glenn went back up into space in 1998, and I was at MVESC, we all gathered in the high school gym on a Saturday and the shuttle broadcast to high school students and community members. And it was really uh, uh, an interesting event that no one who was there would forget. But what Barb did next, I thought was very powerful and I still have mine. <clears throat> she took a picture of John Glenn High School. And in the back, she superimposed a picture of the shuttle. And then she gave each student in the district a quote from John Glenn on that same poster. And the quote was this, if you get your start here, you can go anywhere. What a beautiful message to kids and a continuing and enduring message for all of you who work with people. In some cases, you work directly with kids. In other cases, you work with people who work directly with kids. But I think that is a powerful, powerful message to kids is if you get your start here, you can go anywhere. Then you need to do those things that makes that come true. So it isn't just a slogan. The second one I, I couldn't help but think about, and I'll share something at the end. When I was 10 or 11, I grew up in a small southeastern Ohio town in Monroe County. And I was with my best friend whose dad ran an ice and creamery and they had milk trucks there and it was a bottling plant and all of that. And we were up there helping to load trucks and we got done. There was still lots of people around. His dad was busy and we were sort of in the way. And then I remember him turning to his son as he scolded both of us said, hey, go make yourself valuable. I didn't know it then, but that was probably the greatest lesson I ever got about working in an ESC. The goal here is to make yourself valuable to where people appreciate the support and the ways in which you lend uh, your efforts. Uh, the other thing I, I wanna say, T.S. Eliot, the American poet, one of his quotations that I love was this, that uh, he said, if you aren't in over your head, how will you know how tall you are? All of you, are made taller by the past successes of others. I was made taller when I was there by the past successes of others. 
And what I don't want to belabor the past, I want to take a minute just to recall some of them because they're instructive for what you do in the future. I, I think about, uh, and I don't know if he's there, but I think of uh, Mike Fuller and uh, Barb Leeper and Jim Corey, who I know was there, who built a, a, a dynasty of data services when they were needed. Uh, we created a, they created a piece called Data Rich and People Smart. When Judy Van Voorst was there, she helped to organize trips where we visited poor schools that had high performance all over the country. And the report that was put together and assembled was then shared with the State Board of Education and districts throughout Ohio. And I could go on and on, and that's not the goal here, but the goal is to remind you that you're building successes, that someday somebody will reach back and build on the successes you make. So yours will be particularly instructive given the time period uh, that we now find ourselves. Now, when Lori asked me for a title, I gave her this title because it comes from a story I read about many, many years ago. And I'll repeat the story uh, because it's a true story. It's not uh, apocryphal. 30 years ago in a pediatric hospital in Chicago, there was a young boy. And this young boy who was 10 at the time had gotten a devastating, his parents had gotten a devastating prognosis. Uh, he had leukemia, it was terminal, he was in the hospital, parents decided to keep him there because they could keep him comfortable. Now, as you can imagine, the parents were devastated. What happened the next day in that pediatric hospital on his floor was a clown showed up. And this clown was fully dressed and he had balloons. And he was one of these clowns who could make balloon animals. Uh, so he went to see this young boy and he said, what's your favorite animal? Oh, a giraffe, and he'd make him a giraffe. What's another one, he'd make him. And then pretty soon he had other kids who were in rooms adjoining him and he's doing it for them. But before he left, he said to the little boy, he said, you know, I came to see you because your friend sent me. Do you know what friend sent me? And the little boy said, no. He said, the magic dragon, he is your friend. Now, the next day, a group arrived and played games with him and other kids. And again, before the group left, one member of the group said to him, said, do you know why we're here? And he said, no, your friend sent us the magic dragon. For 82 days, this went on. A different person, a different group, a different time. But there was always somebody pretty soon in the hospital ward. They kept wondering, who's doing this? And they guessed about it. And then they wondered when they'd come in on an afternoon shift at 3 to 11, they would ask the day shift, hey, hey, has, has the Magic Dragon been here? They said, no. Well, then they knew the Magic Dragon would come on their shift. And again, every day there was something interesting, exciting, and particularly for that little boy. Now, the little boy succumbed to his disease. But... His parents were grateful because each day he was no longer, nor were they solely thinking about his eventual demise. That little boy was thinking about, I wonder what the magic dragon's going to do today. And it was the power of optimism. Now, the interesting part about the story that I find the most interesting, perhaps, is now everybody thought, well, surely the magic dragon will reveal him or herself. Who did all this? The coordination, all of this effort. And to this day, no one knows because the magic dragon never revealed him or herself. They don't know. It is the power of selfless giving. In a role at a service center, you're all magic dragons because you're all trying to figure out how you help somebody else. And it's not about your credit. It's about helping them to be successful. And the credit you get is their continued enlistment and support, and frankly, more work. So when I think about this, I wanna offer three lessons. The first lesson from the magic dragon is this. People are not, or people are down on what they're not up on. The magic dragon offered the power of communication. They communicated certainty. 
they communicated support without credit. Uh, I'll give you one other example of Battelle for Kids. I worked with two young ladies who were just brilliant. And the state superintendent called me one day, I said, hey, there is an urban district that really needs some help. There's the new superintendent there. And he described the problem and he said, can you help? So I went and got these two ladies. I said, I think you're the two that could help this person. So I called this person and they were grateful for it. And these two ladies went to that city and they spent the next week and a half helping that person sort through, get ready for his board meeting, write a grant, whole host of things that were all very good. And at the next board meeting, he shared all that just as they had helped him prepare. They got the grant, which helped to begin to mitigate the problem. And the two ladies came back to me and they were upset. They said, he never thanked us. He never recognized us. Every slide he used, we created. And they were a little bit put out. And I remember saying to them, look at the problem you helped solve for him. And at the end of the day, it's not about credit. I understand how you feel, but it's not about that. He's going to come back to us. He knows who did that work and look at the problem you helped to solve. Now, as an aside, he did call me and I said, were you happy with what those two folks did? Oh, yes. I said, won't you drop them a note? And I reminded them, it's those folks who have to go to board meetings. It's those people who are held responsible. And when we take a role like this, it's a support role. It's not always a direct role. The magic dragon was very much about this. It was about solving a problem with certainty and support, but never ever taking credit for it. Now, I'm assuming that you see me, I'm gonna do this and I'll have no idea whether or not anybody does it. And if you're home around other people, they'll probably think you're silly, but I used to make one of these for sixth graders at a camp. Okay, everybody got one of these? I want you to make one of these. All right. All right. Now, I want you to put that right on your chin. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Indulge me here at home. Put that on your chin. Now, I know a number of you have it exactly where I have it, which is on the side of my face, because we're on my chin. Of course, it would be here. Some of you do, but it is in the end. What matters is your actions. I had a professor many years ago tell me, don't tell me what you believe. Show me what you do. I'll tell you what you believe. So the question you have to ask yourself in whatever role you have is, if you were on trial for communications and it's impossible not to communicate, what evidence would you give as to what you communicate, how you communicate it, and is that message being received? Because many times, we do something and we think this is the message that we're doing, but it's not the one they receive. So at the end of the day, communication really matters. The magic dragon, uh, again, what a powerful message. I remember the story from 30 years ago and I'm sure that has been passed down in that hospital and those families because in many respects, the magic dragon revolutionized the culture on a pediatric floor. So that's one lesson from the magic dragon. Another one is if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. The collaboration evident because I can't tell you how many people are involved, but dozens and dozens of people are involved. I can't imagine all the coordination, all of the phone calls. The, it was just off the chart and yet what they, orchestrated, benefited kids, created a sense of excitement. And I think one of the questions you have to ask, again, whatever role you're with in whatever districts you may or may not work with is to ask yourself this, what can we do together that districts couldn't do better individually? There will always be space between problems solved and problems occurring. That's your space. And to ask yourself at times, what could we do better that together that we couldn't do as well individually? Ask that in your department. Ask that around the people you work with. Ask that as you were thinking about districts. Because one of the things school districts have 
uh, ESSER dollars, they're called. And they're going to be looking over the next 24, 28 months for things that help them solve problems. So in doing this, this is a, uh, you know, it's a real opportunity for all of you. And it's part of why you exist. So think about what those would be. The third one is this, from the Magic Dragon, and I think about this, culture doesn't make people. People make culture. What do you cultivate? The Magic Dragon built through that collaboration and communication of genuine care, uh, a powerful investment in people. And it wasn't just an expense. Uh, so think about those three things. Now I wanna ask you a question because this one becomes very powerful. The question is, what do you wanna be known for? Because you are known for something and over time it changes, but it's through intentional actions that we take, we become known for something. What is it that you wanna cultivate? The magic dragon was clear about what he wanted to uh, cultivate. And I, I, I'll, I'll give you this quiz question. I've given it dozens of times. And since uh, no matter whatever group I ask this, not everyone knows the answer, uh, I still give it. If I were to go back to 1973, uh, it was the year I began teaching at Frontier Local, which is in north of Marietta. I, I tease and say, you couldn't have taught anywhere in Ohio and made less money, but had great kids, great parents. But when I began teaching in 1973, if I had had $1,000, first of all, that would have been a sixth of my annual salary. But let's pretend I would have had $1,000 and I could have invested that $1,000, one-time investment in any company on the New York Stock Exchange and let the $1,000 ride for 30 years with no other investments, where could I have gotten the greatest return? Now, I picked 30 years because this is the research of Jim Collins. He talks about that 30 years. For me, that was the period of a public service <clears throat> retirement. I'm sorry about all that, what's happened. But we now know with certainty in 2003 that that $1,000 had turned into a million dollars. And had you kept your money there, today, I can't give you the exact amount, but I can promise you that company is still thriving. I would still buy stock there because your thousand dollar investment in 1973 uh, would be worth millions of dollars. Now, the question is, well, what company was it? I'll give you a hint that won't be helpful. It was a company that was in a sector. Stocks are divided into sectors. There might be durable goods and pharmaceuticals. This stock was in a sector that lost money during the 30 years. Now, wait a minute, you're thinking, wait a minute, the sector lost money, but one company in that sector made money, not only made money, made more money than any other company on the New York Stock Exchange. And the answer to that is, yeah, that's right was in the transportation sector. It was an airline. I'm sure many of you have used this airline. I used the airline a couple of weeks ago in one of the first times that I had flown. Southwest Airlines. I used to fly Southwest Airlines all the time because the idea behind it, Herb Kelleher, the founder, who was there the first 25 years, they wrote a book about it. The book was called appropriately Nuts. And Herb Kelleher took a formula that somebody else, a Japanese company had developed. All the planes are the same, interchangeable parts, small hubs. He took that recipe and he was successful. The Japanese company that had done that years earlier in San Francisco failed. It reminded me again of, I have an aunt who must have collected 500 cookbooks. She can't cook, but she has lots of cookbooks. So it's not just the lesson plan. It is the doing that creates culture. And here's what his bet was. Doesn't mean it has to be your bet, but it was a bet worth remembering. He said, if I treat employees right, they're going to treat customers right. And if customers are treated right, they're going to keep coming 
back and they're going to spend money. And if they spend money, we will make money. And if we make money, stockholders will be happy. All of that became true. It was also the founder of Costco who once said, employees have to love a company first. So the things that you do as part of MBESC really matter because you create the culture, you cultivate things. Uh, one of the things that uh, I've been working on a lot recently with districts is around strengths. I don't know if you've ever taken Strength Finder 2.0. It's the number one book of all time sold on Amazon. And you can get the book or you can download it, the survey, and it gives you a list of, they have 34 strengths and will give you your top five. Or you could buy a different report and get your top 10, or you could buy a different report, get all 34 but it lists your top five strengths. Now, sometimes people say, well, I don't need to take an assessment to list strengths. I like Gallup because they have such a robust base around which they do research on strengths because so many have taken it. But, but sometimes people say, well, I already know what my strengths are. And I say, well, you, you, you might, but I got to tell you what, I've been in karaoke bars and there are people in there that think they can sing too. So having an independent assessment of that uh, gives you something to think about. And they'll give you a report about that. And I suggest you ought to know strengths for three reasons. One is it'll make you a better leader. Peter Drucker said that it's easier to take ordinary and ordinary strengths and turn them into extraordinary by using them than it is to take somebody who's incompetent and to make them mediocre. We need to manage our weaknesses. We need to manage our weaknesses, not ignore them, but not faster. It's why I never give people a report of 34, because what happens is after they get back the first five or six and talk about this, then they want to go to the bottom of the list and they want to work on things God didn't put in very much up. The second reason is to use strengths is it builds better teams. Give people a chance to use their strengths. You can do anything. You cannot do everything. And the third reason to use strengths, it improves engagement. When people are engaged, productivity rises, happiness rises, less absenteeism, all those things. So I say those three, and this last spring, in three southeastern Ohio districts, we gave a new product that Gallup has created for middle school students. Uh, it's called Explore. It gives kids their top three themes. And teachers begin, it's a piece of personalization. It's not another program. So a strength-based culture is something that if I were a building principal again, I'd make that part of it. So you have to think about what is it that you want to cultivate? Now, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. Uh, I never read the book, Eat, Pray, Love. Uh, they made a movie about it. My understanding, Elizabeth Gilbert wrote a wonderful story about self-deprecating story about a love interest in Bali and food in Italy and spirituality in India. But I like the idea of three. Three is a powerful way to communicate, having three points, not 20 points. Uh, it doesn't always work, but if you want something to be sticky, have three. Now, if I got to be the czar of evaluation, I would ask people, what are your three verbs? Tell me what your three verbs are. And it comes from one year I asked a, a number of teachers to a district that I was going to go. They started picking verbs. Like one teacher said to me, prepare, observe, learn. And then she told me why each of those was important. And then I said, well, what kind of evidence would I have that, in fact, you do those? And with prepare, she talked to me about resources she uses and things that she might show me and what kids learn. Then I asked another teacher. I remember they said align, assess, achieve. They probably had just gone to a workshop. But I had to ask seven or eight teachers before I got the same verb. And what it reminded me is not that there is a right verb, but that how you see your job is how you do your job. Now, I want you to think about your verbs because we can guess why you picked that verb. But in the chat room, Put one of your verbs or two of them. Let's just see what some people would put for verbs. If I were your boss and I came to you, whatever role you have, and I said that to you, give me a verb. 
And then I would further ask you, why that verb? And then I would say, how are you gonna do it? And then what evidence would you give that it matter? So what are some of your verbs? Just put them up here. Let's just look at some of them. All right, Jim, the verbs are flowing in. I see collaborate, lead, laugh, support, uh, flexible, encourage, love. Kyle Palladino says safely move. <laughs> okay. So Kyle, that's a good one. Um, create, laugh, assess. You get the idea here because, but, but it's, this is not an exercise in rhetoric. It's one to really talk about. So for example, if somebody said care and I'd say, okay, what evidence do you have that you care? At the end of the year, what are you going to give me that you, that would demonstrate to me that you did that? And don't just give me a copy of one note you sent home with a kid. Uh, because when you do something and it, you cultivate it, you do it repeatedly. You're known for it. Uh, each of you has your own culture. Uh, it's what you're going to be known for. Uh, David Brooks, the columnist for the New York Times, talks about resume virtues and eulogy virtues. Eulogy virtues, you can read them in obituaries. They'll say he or she would give the shirt off their back made the room smile when she walked into it, uh, created and loved her grandkids unequivocally. Um, eulogy virtues are who you are as a person. And I can tell you this, live and lead the way you want to be remembered because you will be. So those matter. And the question you have to ask at MVSC is, what do you want to be known for? What do you want other people to say about you when you're not there? Because they will. And it makes more sense to start with individuals and to be intentional about what really matters. So I think the magic dragon, uh, if I were taking verbs, the magic dragon communicated, collaborated, and cultivated. Uh, it really mattered. Uh, a longtime principal at John Glenn. Some of you may have known him, Don McKendry. Uh, I used to laugh because he would say to kids who had gotten in trouble, would say, "Look, son, you can't talk your out of you can't talk yourself out of something you behaved yourself into. It is our behavior. Uh, so whatever you pick, I, I, I've seen so many good ones here that make me think. I, I love." someone just put reflect and it's thinking about what you did because sometimes you just get through something over this pandemic we just got through it and we're going to be reflecting for a long long time uh, so those things those things truly matter uh, a couple last things I met several years ago I was at a conference in Atlanta I got to talking to a professor there I didn't know him but you know, sometimes strangers will tell you things they wouldn't tell their cousin. He did, was very excited that day because he told me about something that had just happened at lunch the week before. Uh, prior to that, about a month before that, he was a professor at, I forget which North Carolina college, uh, but he had won a teaching award. And there was an article in the paper. And he told me that he had once been a high school teacher in Pennsylvania and then came to the South, got advanced degrees and stayed there. And he said he got a call from a, a lady who said, wait a minute, uh, Dr. Such and Such, were you the English teacher at Such and Such High School? I said, yes. She goes, well, you were my senior English teacher. And then, of course, he knew it was. And they made plans to have lunch. And he said, I, it was a wonderful class. We all have classes we always want to remember. And then we have some we can't forget. And he said, that class was great. So it was his second year of teaching. And he said they loved to discuss books and he loved to have kids read books and said it came time for graduation he really started to see him graduate and he said of course all of them had started to invite him to their parties and he said I had no money and I didn't feel right showing up without a gift so I decided the last day of school I'd give them a gift that would be my admission to go to their parties which I wanted to go to he said I made a four-page handout entitled 25 books we never read you need to read and like the first one was Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich with a short paragraph summarizing what the book was about. So four pages of this, 
the last day of school, he gave everybody that in an envelope, each student with a note, and that was his admission to go to that. Now, fast forward 20 some years later, he's meeting with this lady. They have a great lunch, catching up on things. They get ready to leave, they hug. She starts to walk off. She goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. She goes back. She opens up her purse. She pulls out a four page handout that had been folded and refolded with notes in the margin. And she looked at him and she said, I've read every one of these books. When do we get our next assignment? Teaching is the gift that keeps on giving and it lasts a long time. And I wanna finish with something because I wanna show you uh, a picture that was taken yesterday. Uh, so Amy, if you could put that on there, that would be great. Now, I have to tell you, uh, that's me. If we were playing to tell the truth and you were guessing who the lady is, who's signing a baseball there, you would never guess. And then there's a green book on that table. Now I'm gonna put these together for you. The green book is a book that I wrote called To Lead is to Teach, Stories and Strategies from the Classroom to the Boardroom. And yesterday was the first day it came out and I had one copy and I spoke at an event and the lady there, yes, are you sitting down? This lady was my high school English teacher. Now, if I had told you that before showing her, you would have, I would have said, I saw my high school English teacher yesterday. They would have, you would have all thought, oh my God, the lady must be a hundred years old. Well, she's not. And she certainly looks great. Uh, but she came to an event. I had somebody invite her and she came because I wanted to give her the first book because she is the one who inspired me. And the baseball I had her sign is one that I've been keeping for a while because I have other signatures, because I encourage people in a class I teach, first class, I always pass out a baseball. And I say, I want you to get three to five signatures of people who have made a difference in your life. If you've ever heard the expression, uh, did you ever see a turtle on a fence post? If you did, it didn't get there by itself. And none of you got to where you are by yourself. And I would encourage you to go get autographs and tell them why they're being asked to sign your baseball. And I had saved my baseball for a long time with signatures on it because I knew I wanted to get her signature on it. And I wanna share one last thing about her because I have a friend who helped me with my book who lives in Arkansas, where he just retired as a distinguished professor of English. And when I told him what I was gonna do, he said, please pass along uh, this message to her. And uh, I had her read it. I said, I don't wanna pass this message along. I want you to, uh, I want you to read it. And here's what it says. He had written, please give my regards to Mrs. Pyatt. She's the very real reason I majored in English, taught English in college for 25 years and earned the rank of distinguished professor of English. She inspired me to be the best teacher that I could be to help my students get better every day. I think of her fondly. I shared that with her. He was the brightest guy in our class. As I teased him, I said, I played behind you in basketball. I sat behind you in class. His last name was L, mine was M. And I said, I lagged behind you academically. And it was the truth, he was the smartest guy in our class. But what was interesting is when I shared that with her, she was both overwhelmed and a little surprised. She said, I didn't know she was a magic dragon. You don't know all the messages that you are sending out. I will tell you that they matter. They matter to kids. They matter to the people who you help, who help kids. So I would just leave you with this challenge. What do you want to be known for? How do you communicate? How do you collaborate? What do you cultivate? Because collectively what you do rolls up to the entire organization. And yes, that was my high school English teacher. Now, I need to stop. 
because you have time for other things. Uh, I love Muskingum Valley and I wish you all the best in this next year. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And I want to share my baseball that I have with many signatures. And I have to say, and I've, I've shared this before with you, Jim, um, but for those of you who don't know, Jim was my teacher. Uh, he taught te social studies when I decided to become a teacher. And he inspired me to, to continue to grow in the field of education. And I can't thank him enough for all that he has done to help me. And the baseball is a great idea. I encourage you all to do that because I have done it and it's a good memory. It sits right here in my office if anybody wants to see it. Thank you for inspiring us, Jim. I, um, you're spot on. We serve others. We're often in the background here at the ESC, but all the verbs I was looking at in the chat, they're all supportive. They're, they're service verbs. They, they definitely demonstrate what we do and where our heart is. We're not out there to get the kudos and the credits. We're out there to serve others and support others and to help them do their best. So I appreciate all you've done and a great message today. As always, I always enjoy hearing from you. Thank you. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to welcome some new staff. Jim, you're welcome to stay on if you would like. And uh, if you have to go, I certainly understand. So I enjoyed that everybody um, or a lot of people put in there, hey, I'm new, my first opening day. So I want to officially welcome you. We have, I'm gonna read through some of our names. Kyle Bethel, Lizzie Black, Liddy Brodegard, Jeremiah Brown, Michaela Carpenter, Jonathan Clark, Shauna Cosgrove, Brooke Cozart, Sheena Cunningham, Danielle DeVole, Brianna Eveland, Bailey Hartley, Sky Herman, Angela Husty, Teresa Coker, Ashley Lands, Sherry Lawrence, Jordan Mitchell, Shannon Mitchell, Afton Powell, Lindsay Rayner, Lindsay Silverman, Hannah Seitz, Kendra Shiner, Trisha Sowers, Alicia Walter, Amber Watkins, and Lori Wood. Welcome to all these folks, and we are so glad to have you on our team this year. Next, I'm going to introduce some key contacts. We have some new key contacts here at the MVESC. Please get to know these people. Make them your friends. They will make your life easier. I'm excited to introduce Danielle DeVol. She's in our fiscal department. She is Scott Pittman's assistant, and we're excited to have her part of our team. Lindsay Rayner is the new Kathy Morgan. She's director of curriculum and instruction here at the ESC. If you get a chance to meet Lindsay, um, she's one of those very happy individuals. You'll hear from her soon. She's very inspirational. I want to welcome Lindsay. And we have Bill Arnett. And as you all know, um, Kim Tatman uh, left us this past year, and we are very blessed to have Bill join our team as our communications coordinator because he has just been such an asset to us and really helped a lot with our presentation today. He put all of this together, and I just can't thank him enough for all he has done. So you will hear from him today also. So seek these people out. Make them your friends. They will be able to help you. Next, I'm going to hand this over to Amy to celebrate our service awards. All right. Thanks, Lori. Let me advance our slide here. I've got too many things going on at once, right? Um, first off, that was such an awesome keynote from Dr. Mahoney. That was one of the best I think I've heard in an opening day. So that was, that filled my cup. I hope it did yours as well. And now we get a chance to stretch and yawn, do some uh, calisthenics with me, right? And let's take a minute to do some celebrating. I want you to help me recognize either in the chat, um, I didn't know this until just recently, you can send emojis in the chat or you can do your shout outs um, if you can't find the emojis, but help me recognize and celebrate these employees who have reached five years of service. Tasha Abood, Danielle Arnett, Brooklyn Bowers, Amber Daly, Sean Enright, Teresa Copel or Teresa Gable, my, my apologies, Teresa Gable, Jessica Hardesty, Mallory Harlan, 
Sierra Gill, Rena McLean, Nancy Moore, Lori Morrow, Kyle Palladino, Cheryl Rayburn, Amy Spidel, Jesse Wilson, and Wendy Wyant. That is awesome. Five years of service. Congratulations. Like I said, head to the chat. Give these folks a shout out. Five years is something to celebrate. And now I am going to turn things back over to Lori for our ESC update. I am thrilled this year to be able to give you good news. As you guys know, I'm a huge advocate at the state uh, level to promote educational funding. So the legislature passed House Bill 110. Um, I can't tell you how many phone calls I made, how many letters I wrote, but I'm happy to let you know that um, for the first time in 15 years, ESCs were not cut. And in fact, we were increased with our funding. Now, you know, I'm sad to say we didn't receive all the funding we would like, but you know what? I'm, I'm thrilled with uh, 15 years of history here where we've been cut and cut and cut and cut every year. And now I can say, you know what? We received an increase. So I'm very excited about our future. And as many of you know, we delivered masks and test kits this year, um, helped districts uh, provide services to their kids during the pandemic. And we were the go-to organization for ODE and the governor's office. And so I really think that uh, ESCs are finally getting the respect they deserve and we're on the right path. So I can't tell you enough that, that how great that's going. Next thing, many of you know, we've had some tremendous changes in the past two years here at the ESC. Um, but now I, I'm really happy to tell you that these changes have resulted in more services and programs and reduced spending. We're in a great place for growth. We're moving in the right direction. We have a lot of great things going on. I spent the day yesterday with Amy out in the districts um, introducing our telehealth initiative uh, along with uh, people from Lieutenant Governor Houston's office of Broadband Ohio. And we went and visited some of our districts and met some of our staff who will be integral in this new program of telehealth. And uh, it was a very exciting day, uh, exhausting, but very exciting. So that's just one of the many things we're doing that's really outside the norm that's going to put us at the top. Um, next, we're working on the whole child approach to learning. And uh, Lindsay Rayner is taking our lead on that. And I'm excited about, about that because the, the pandemic has really brought to the forefront the social emotional learning piece. And the whole child approach will help put us again right out there at the, at the top of the pack. So the whole child approach, you're going to learn more about today with Lindsay and Amy to talk a little bit about that. And so I'm going to leave you with that because they are the experts in this and I'm going to let Lindsay take it away from here. Thanks, Lori. As Dr. Mahoney said so well, uh, the MBSC fills the space between problems solved and problems occurring. And I am so excited to be here at the MBESC, filling that space with you, uh, building our whole child framework offerings. As a former building administrator and teacher, I know that we already do so much to educate the whole child. The MBESC is here to support your efforts. As you can see from the framework from the Ohio Department of Education, supporting the whole child is about much more than academics. It is about educating students who are healthy, safe, engaged, supported, and challenged. The MVESC's professional development will be focusing particularly on social emotional learning. Potential professional development topics include positive behavior intervention and support, otherwise known as PBIS, character education, prevention education, trauma-informed classrooms, and mental wellness and self-care. I'm here to provide professional development that is data-driven, individualized, and flexible. Let me know how I can help. Now, here's Amy Luby to tell you more about what's on tap for the whole child framework. Thanks, Lindsay. Let me get my screen moving here. So, like Lindsay just reiterated, um, we have an incredible opportunity. And many of you know, we've been a resource for schools in all of these areas for a really long time, but no time, I think especially in light of COVID, no time has been better to become the regional leader in whole child strategies and evidence-based programs. 
So Muskingum Valley is really well positioned to grow our services as experts in implementing those whole child system frameworks, as well as doing what I think we do best, bringing people from multiple agencies, schools, community partners, bringing all those folks together to best serve our students. I want to call out that it's really important to say we're not suggesting that Muskingum Valley employees become behavioral health providers or mental health experts. Instead, we have a chance and an opportunity to connect our school partners with some of those existing community partners and providers to best serve our students. So a few ways that you're gonna see us doing this um, in the upcoming school year include bringing more evidence-based programs, uh, specifically in the realm of prevention to our school and community partners, including Catch My Breath, and that's a vaping prevention model, uh, youth mental health first aid, and Sources of Strength, a suicide prevention program. So we're hoping to bring those, those training opportunities here to the ESC so that our school partners and some of uh, you can take advantage of those. We also have a new family and community partnership liaison on staff. If you haven't had a chance yet to meet Tanya Steele, please seek her out. Tanya's work involves connecting students and well, connecting the schools and the students and families within those schools with resources in the community to help them remove some of those non-academic barriers that they're, they're faced with. She'll also be co-leading a lot of homeless children and youth support efforts in the coming year. Uh, like Lori just mentioned, we were on the road yesterday. We did a three county tour with some friends uh, that came down from Columbus. And we walked through this exciting opportunity that we're, 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 are, we are embarking upon in school-based telehealth. So we uh, were able to secure a $1.15 million grant from Innovate Ohio, and that's going to allow us to bring school-based telehealth to um, 15 school districts in our region. Many of us, if you're like me, I was able to take advantage of telehealth technology during COVID. And it's a really effective way to increase access to mental and behavioral health supports and even acute primary care health for our kiddos. And lastly, uh, Muskinga Valley is the local lead for an Ohio Department of Education grant that was designed to bring more of those resources, more school-based social workers and more school counselors to schools in our region. So as you've heard, we're invested in helping our districts meet all of their needs, both academic and non-academic. So if you have any questions about whole child efforts, please reach out to Lindsay or myself at any time. And now I would like to introduce my colleague, Adam Copeland, to tell you a little bit about some exciting professional development opportunities that are gonna be coming your way this school year. So Adam, take it away. Thank you, Amy. And I don't know if you heard in the background, but my uh, new Lex family is going crazy and we are super excited to get this year started. Um, we have some amazing keynotes coming up for uh, the year must see um, keynotes and professional development starting out. We have our power positive leadership um, that I get the opportunity to lead. I've been going around to several districts recently to deliver this power positive leadership and kind of uh, love to help uh, admin teams and different people just get uh, started. A lot of the things you heard uh, Dr. Mahoney say this morning are things that are in there and can really um, uplift you and get you started for a great school year. Um, then in September 24th, really, really excited to bring um, Thomas Murray to the ESC. He's going to be uh, in the skin room at the ESC, and it's going to give uh, up to 10 contact hours for anybody that needs to renew their license. Um, and it's leading past uncertainty. The entire keynote for the all year is based on this resilience model and, and coming through and leading past uncertainty. Everyone um, last year, as we've talked about already, led through uncertainty and the uncertain times that we were going through. Now it's time that we take uh, COVID and not use it as a crutch, but as a launching point. Um, then <clears throat> October 18th, um, absolutely amazing to have Damon West. Um, look him up if you haven't heard of him. Um, he's gonna be um, at Rolling Plains um, there by Maysville, and we're gonna bring as many students as we can get um, for three different sessions with him. Um, just an absolutely amazing time. Um, if you've not heard the coffee bean, then look it up. He's um, absolutely phenomenal. So we're super excited to be able to bring him. Um, then in November, um, November 16th, we'll be bringing in Laura 
Vandernoot Lipsky, and she, this is for teachers and paraprofessionals. Um, that is just uh, an amazing part for the whole child and the secondary trauma. And um, we wanna continue to learn more and more about that every chance that we get. Um, that will be an after hours and it's a Zoom. So anybody can join from anywhere. Um, again, secondary trauma, is such an important part that we're getting, getting involved in and staying involved. And then at the end of the year, Jim Van Allen will be coming in with a building a culture of resilience. If you've ever read the energy bus, um, he brings the energy bus to schools. So um, a great opportunity for, for you to learn more about culture and continuing to build a, an amazing culture and a culture of resilience. And as I said before, all of these give you um, great contact hours for renewing your license. So I would uh, highly recommend that you talk to your ad administration or your admin teams and try to get out to these. Um, most superintendents have heard about them. So hopefully we can continue to spread the word and get some great resilience as we go through um, another very unique and challenging year. And um, make sure that if you have anything that you see professional development wise that you would like to be added, check out our calendar. We're always updating and, and making sure that uh, professional development opportunities are on there. Um, contact myself or definitely contact Lindsay as we're working really, really hard to make sure that we are up to date and everybody can go through. And at the end, when you need to uh, renew your license, you have as many contact hours uh, as you need. Makes it a lot simpler for your LPDC and just for everybody. So really appreciate your time. Uh, let's have a wonderful year. And now it's back to Amy. Thanks, Adam. I can't wait to uh, attend some of these PDs. I'm especially excited about the secondary trauma session that we have uh, coming up. That's going to be awesome. So a little more celebrating. I hope you're ready to hit that chat again with your emojis and woot woots and yeehaws. Um, a decade is a mighty long time. And the folks on this screen are mighty fine. Let's celebrate these employees who have reached 10 years of service with Muskingum Valley. Jeff Baker, Akoya Dennis, Jolie McWhorter, and Kristen Rambo. That's awesome. 10 years is, is a really long time uh, to stay in one place. And we appreciate you and all you're doing for kids over the last decade. And next I have also some 15 year awards. So picture it, Sicily, 2006. Okay, that was a little bit of corny Golden Girls humor for you this morning, but these special employees began their careers with MVESC 15 years ago. So let's double back on our applause, hit that chat again, and celebrate these employees who have reached 15 years uh, with the Educational Service Center and make some noise. Arlette Abram, Mary Archer, Jessica Blosser, Kate Brenner, Kelly Hupp, Patty Logan, Penny Murray and Anjanette Pitcock. That is awesome. Uh, it's a fantastic group of ladies on this slide, that's for sure. Congratulations on 15 years with the ESC. And now I am gonna turn it back to Lori for some exciting scholarship opportunity news. Thanks, Amy. Welcome. Many of you knew Mr. Watt. Mr. Watt was our governing board member. He served 26 years on our governing board here at the MBESC. He was a much loved member of our team and uh, he passed away last year. The board decided in his honor, we would offer a scholarship um, to help honor his memory here at the MBESC. As you, many of you who knew Mr. Watt know that he really lived to serve others. And he was a testament to the importance of service in society. So the scholarship will be awarded to a child or a grandchild of an MVESC employee. In order to apply, each applicant will need to complete an application and write an essay on the importance of service. The essay is due September 15th. Please email Shelly Tolliver if you would like an application packet. We are excited about honoring Mr. Watt with this scholarship, and we know that this program would make him so happy if he were here today. The winner will be announced at the MVESC board meeting on October 11th. We anticipate that the scholarship could take effect um, for the second semester. So please take this opportunity to encourage your child or grandchild to apply for this scholarship and honor Mr. Watt's memory. This is a wonderful opportunity. 
So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to our rookie assistant treasurer, Danielle Duvall. Danielle. Good morning, everyone. I got you, Danielle. I could hear you loud and clear. Are you seeing this? Okay. Yeah, no, you're off no, that, That's why it's blank. I'm like, oh no. Uh, okay. All righty. Your screen's up. You're okay, good to great. go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so last year we did not require the wellness screenings and we're gonna continue into that this upcoming year. Uh, we do ask that you still continue your visits to your doctor for your wellness visits because they can catch things early on. Uh, the other thing I wanna cover is our 30 day rule. Um, be mindful that open enrollment is the only time of year that you can make changes to your insurance coverage. Um, open enrollment will be in November this year and I'll be sending out emails um, leading up to that to, to kind of put that on your radar. Everyone has to, to um, participate in the open enrollment and you will, you will need to be checking your MVESC email accounts for that. Um, but keep in mind, if you have a qualifying event um, you only have 30 days from the day that event happens to make any changes to your insurance outside of the open enrollment period. Um, qualifying events include uh, marriage, birth, divorce, death, uh, loss of coverage. So if you have any of those changes, you have 30 days from the day that happens to get it changed. Otherwise, you have to wait until open enrollment to uh, make those changes. And if you have a change, please reach out to myself, to Debbie Kimball, and to ALR Insurance so that we can make that change for you. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Bill now. Thanks. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm excited to participate in the opening day presentation, and my role is to provide a few communication updates and reminders. We'll be looking at email, social media, and what you should do if you're contacted by the news media. If you were here for last year's opening day, much of this will sound familiar. If you're new like me, it will be new to you. Either way, we wanna make sure that everyone is ready for the school year. The first topic is emails. The most important thing to remember is anything sent via email can become a public record and is subject to a public records request. So make sure not to put anything in an email disparaging students, parents, coworkers. Make sure the emails are positive and professional. I'm not sure if you've ever done this, but I know I've typed an email and hit send and then wished I could have gotten it back. I learned my lesson and I often type emails even today and then go and delete all the words because I decide that my message would not really add anything constructive to the discussion. A brief pause or a count to 10, like my dad did with me when I was growing up, he had to count to 10 a lot. A brief pause or a count to 10 can sometimes make a big difference um, at least it does for me. And like my grandma Myrtle used to tell me when I was growing up, don't say anything you wouldn't want to see on the front page of the newspaper. I think that is good advice when typing emails too. Moving on now to social media. I don't believe anything has changed the world as much during my life as the internet, social media, and the way we communicate using it. I'm old enough to remember having a landline in our house and making long distance calls. Those were short calls. I also wrote an actual letter and put it in the mail to one of my out-of-state roommates when I headed off to college. Times have changed. Here are some social media do's and don'ts and things to consider. Remember, when using social media, what we post or comment not only reflects on us, but our profession, the schools we serve, and MBESC. Make sure to check your privacy settings on social media platforms. And understand that even though you may have good settings there, tagging someone or using a hashtag may allow other folks to access your page that wouldn't otherwise be able to see it. Tip number two, don't vent. Nothing is ever private on social media, so it's often better to keep those emotionally charged posts in your head and not on your screen. And as you type a post, tweet, or comment, remember to pause and think twice before hitting the enter key. Remember the Ohio Licensure Code of Professional Conduct. Your responsibility is to ensure any relationships and dialogue with a student is kept professional and transparent in nature. 
any inappropriate private communication with a parent or student is a violation of the licensure code of professional conduct for Ohio educators and could result in disciplinary action. This is as much for your protection as it is for students. Don't be suspicious. Don't post suspicious or unreliable information. If you see something online that just doesn't sound quite right, it probably isn't quite right. And don't try to communicate anonymously. And finally, as our good friend Kim Tatman would say, dude, be kind, stay positive. In fact, Kim sent me a message first thing this morning and wanted to tell all of you to have a great school year. So be like Kim, be kind, avoid, inciting other, in, avoid insulting others, including students, staff, parents, our extended school community or other school districts. Avoid posting, sharing, commenting, or otherwise engaging in rumors or unsupported, unsupported information. Your post and comment should build and support the MBESC service region and team. We have a document that covers all these social media topics and more. Please let me know if you would like a copy to review. And finally, now we move on to chief communicators. We have a fairly robust media presence in our service territory. We have traditional newspapers, radio, TV, and new internet only news sources. I'm sure many of you see those kind of sources when you're surfing on the internet. In the old days, it may have been unlikely that you would have been cornered by a reporter. But these days, reporters are everywhere and they can broadcast your comments around the world almost instantly. So what should you do if a reporter from the local radio, TV, or newspaper asks you for comments? This is super easy. Refer them to our superintendent, Lori Snyder Lowe, treasurer Scott Pittman, or me. When you, we have you covered when it comes to social, when it comes to media and reporters. Being transparent, I'm a recovering journalist, so I feel very comfortable talking with reporters and even having cameras and microphones in my face. So a quick review: emails can be public records. Make sure yours are positive and professional. Social media: don't think social media platforms are truly private, so be careful what words and images you post. And finally, chief communicators. When the news media comes calling, refer them to the superintendent, treasurer, or me. And if you have questions about any of this information, please let me know. Up next, we have Kathy Morgan to cover the LPDC. Take it away, Kathy. Thank you for that segue, Bill, and good morning, everyone. One of the most important items of business for an educator, in my opinion, is keeping their license or licenses, if you have more than one, up to date. So just like renewing a driver's license every four years so that you can legally drive a car, every educator must have a current license to operate and lead a classroom, a school building, or a school district. Local professional development committees, LPDCs, are responsible for reviewing and appro approving individual professional development plans. Some of you call them ippy dippies or IPDPs. They are responsible for approving submitted coursework and other professional development activities that educators pr propose for the purpose of license renewal. I would like to take just a few moments to introduce the Muskingum Valley ESC LPDC committee uh, who review your submissions. These committee members are knowledgeable about the process and would encourage you to reach out to them for questions and support for your submissions. Would like to thank Tasha Abood, Gretchen Combs, who serves as our secretary, Katie Duvall, Kim Lynch, Deb Shoemaker, Morgan Snyder, Shelly Tolliver, who serves as the administrative assistant, and me, who's the administrative chair. Don't hesitate to call any of us with your questions. We are meeting six times during the school year. You can submit all your documents to me or Shelly at least a week prior uh, to the meeting. You can find this handy renewal guide on the Muskingum Valley ESC website. And if you go to educators or for educators and then uh, down to the LPDC tab, 
This is a great resource that gives you direction and lays out your responsibilities for each year of your license. The LPDC asks that you be ready. Map out your license activities on your five-year plan, that ippy dippy. Review your plan regularly. That means many times during the school year. Know where you are on the five-year renewal plan at the start of each school year. And keep track of your professional development activities within each five-year cycle. And lastly, get to know the MBSC LPDC members so that you know who to reach out to for support. So I've talked to you about the important topic of being licensed. Up next are Adam and Kate to cover the super important topic of making sure that you get paid. Adam, Kate. Hi, everybody. It is saying that I cannot start my video. Here we go. Thanks, Kathy. We can see you now, Kate. Thanks, Kathy. I am here in the scam room with my friends and family from the Multiple Disabilities Program. We're having a great time, aren't we, everybody? Next, by counterpart, Adam. Copeland will share some information about the kiosk, timesheets, and substitutes. Please pay close attention to the following video. Good morning, MBESC uh, friends and family. Excited for us to get started on this. It's opening day and get everything kicked off. I get the excitement this morning of talking you through the website a little bit for timesheets, kiosks, and if you need a substitute. So I'm gonna to try to get through this, uh, but being able to share the screen and give you a little bit of visual for it. Here's the main page, mbsc.org. Um, if you're an employee, you can come over here to the employee page and click on that. Enter your uh, email address and then your password. Clicking login, it takes you to the employee site here. As we go down here, you can see the human resources section. Looking on human resources, we'll go here to HR kiosk. So anytime you need to take a day off of any sort, this would be the place that you would go. It'll bring up to the employee kiosk. I would highly recommend at this point, clicking a little star uh, up here in the top right so you can save this page. You can just go one click and get here. Uh, put in your email address and your password allows you to go in. Anytime you're taking a day off, you should be over here on the left, leave request, click there. It'll bring down a, a bunch of different menu options, create a new request, and you have your job title should be up there. If something's different there, just drop down, drop down and probably select something else, but your job title should be up there. You then go down here and click on the leave type, whatever type of leave you're about to take, um, jury duty, military, other, personal, professional, or sick. Up here is the doc days. Uh, remember, those are emergencies only. Uh, you should not be taking them unless it is pre-approved and it's an emergency situation. Uh, again, you can ask your supervisor or uh, if you have any other questions about that. So you'll select that. Let's say we'll do personal leave here. It will bring up, everyone should start with a balance of three personal days. And you can put in a reason here, just like if it was sick time, you would put a reason for why you were taking the day off. Click here for your start date, let's just say it's the 24th. And start time, I start at eight o'clock, so it's 8 a.m. End time, I'm just taking the full day, that one day. I'll go ahead and put the end time there in my Day normally ends at, let's say, three o'clock. Make sure I go over here and click on PM. So I have one full day there. And down here, it then goes down and says, leave requested in days. I'm taking one day, so I put in one. Nothing over here. If you were happen to just be taking a half day, you would put nothing in here, and you would click a half right here. Then you can go down. 
comments if you need to put any information in there, special information, and then just hit submit and the email chain will start flowing for approvals to your supervisor or, and then it'll go all the way through to the superintendent and you should get an email um, saying that it was approved and you can take the day. Very quick way to go about it, but hopefully it's a little easier. You can refer to this. We're going to send this out, but if you have any questions, please contact your supervisor and make sure that we can answer any questions you have with the kiosk for taking days off. Again, once you log in, leave request, create a new request, and <clears throat> brings you to the screen where you can put everything that you need to put in there. Hope that is helpful, and I'll be back in a second to talk about all right, we're back, right back here to the main mbsc.org page. And again, we're looking at timesheets here to make sure that we can put our timesheets in um, quickly and easily. Go over here again to employees. If you just hover over employees, you will see a section down here that says timesheet. Um, if you happen to be on here and you're a substitute or um, you can go and you can just go right in there and click um, timesheets. Brings you up to this screen. And I will log in here to the test account so I can get everything through. So when you're going through here, you brings it up. This is what your screen should look like. Um, we go in, you have your name up here and just click on get your timesheet and then you have your blank timesheet. Uh, let's see, let's say we did start, scroll down here, we have today, Thursday the 12th, we are 9.30 a.m. We're going to be here until 11.30. And that, again, one thing to make sure is switching that to a.m. So we're 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. on this day. No lunch taken out of there. And once we click on that, when I hit save, it'll calculate the hours. We've got two hours in there today. If there's any comments that you need to make, you can make them over here to the right. And okay. Put that in there and I am good. You can now see that. Um, let's say that we start on Friday, We've got our normal day, you get there at 7, 7 a.m. We work till 2 p.m. and we're good. Click on save, puts in your time at that point. One thing that I, I believe is important, if you're taking a sick day in the kiosk, let's say we were doing that on the 4th here, 7, 7 a.m., 2 p.m., your normal work day, but over here you're going to put sick day. Or you could put personal day, whatever day you're taking on the day, on that, on that day. Click save. Has everything up there. When it's time to submit, you can see right down here, email. It should have your supervisor's name on there. I click and your timesheet has been submitted by email. It's important that we realize on the 15th and 30th of every month is when these need to be turned in. Some people go in every day and update them. Some people do it once a week. It's just really important for a uh, physical department to be able to get this and the supervisor to be able to get them, look at them and uh, review them and then submit uh, on up the chain on the 15th and 30th of every month. So if you could time to do that, that would be amazing for everybody. And that's just a quick look at timesheets to kind of help you as you look through that. So I'll be right back in a second. Well, good morning, we're back. I'm excited to get started with ESC and everything that's going on uh, this year. It's going to be absolutely an amazing year. Last thing I want to talk about this time would be substitutes, um, paraprofessionals. And if you're taking a day off, obviously put it in the kiosk and the supervisor will get all of that taken care of. But one thing that does not happen that sometimes I think gets forgotten, easily forgotten, and, uh, no fault of anybody's, is the substitute. Um, Carla and um, Julie do not get the kiosk information. 
So as a paraprofessional, if you put your information into the kiosk, it, they do not get an email, but Carla and Julie take care of that. Um, so it's important that the next slide will have their contact information, email and phone number that you take that down. And depending on finding the right way to communicate with them, whether it's via email or a text message, and if you're taking a day off, make sure that they're aware of that. It's difficult to find subs and the sooner they know, the better. If you know someone that's willing to sub for you and we can get them on the sub list, that would be remarkable. And the more subs we have, the better we'll use them. And that just makes everything a lot simpler. So if you're planning on taking a day, when you put it in the kiosk, make sure you contact um, either Carla or Julie and they will get the information, and get everything going as quick as we can so we make sure the rooms are covered. Timesheets, 15th and 30th. Again, make sure we're doing that. But I hope we have a wonderful year. Really looking forward to it. Uh, have a blessed year. Thank you, Adam. Who likes to get paid? I know I do. <laughs> if you want to receive your paycheck on time, it is imperative that you get your timesheets in on the 15th and 30th of each month. It is also important to have great attendance. However, we all know that there is always an instance where you might have to miss school. When that happens, if you are located in Mustang County, please contact Julie McWhorter. Her information is on the screen. If you are located in Perry County, you're going to contact Carla Terry, and her information is on the screen as well. Also, if you know anybody and I mean anybody who would like to be a sub, we are having a sub fair until August 31st. Please have them call the front desk to get their uh, background checks set up and their testing requirements. Thank you. Thanks, Kate and Adam for that awesome update. Um, Neither of you segued it back to me. You didn't kick it back to me. So I will just, just pick up where I was going to pick up, right? <laughs> and one real quick note, um, and Adam's put it here in the chat. There was a small mistake in the video um, when he was showing in timesheets about putting in personal or sick time. And we actually had a comment or a question in the chat about that. So he, he does have a revised video and we'll update that on the website and send that out. Um, but you do, as far as I know, and Kate and Adam, you might want to turn your cameras on or your mics on. I think it's correct that you don't put your personal or sick time in. You only put in time that you're actually physically in the classroom working, right? Yes, yes. Sorry for the mix up there. I did correct it in the video um, and we'll get it on there. Only put in time if you're actually physically at work. Um, again, sorry for the, the mix up on the video. Um, I'll get that corrected. But if you're at work, put your time in. If you're not, don't put it in there. But we do need you to put in the comments, whether it's a sick day, personal day, um, those so we can, we can confirm that with the kiosk. Um, your time um, goes through the kiosk on those days that you are absent from work. So thanks for the question. Uh, keep me on my toes. And again, have a wonderful year and a very blessed year. Thanks for clarifying that, Adam. That's good. And for Carol for being right on top of that <laughs> for us. So next we are going to do a little more celebrating. Um, and I like to think, is there anything more celebratory than a toast? I don't really think so. So if you have a coffee or tea nearby, I've got my emotional support water bottle right beside me. Raise that high and join me in saying cheers to these employees who are celebrating 20 or more years with Muskingum Valley. So with 20 years of service, I recognize Cheryl Bear, Annette Lynn, and Linda Wolshire. 20 years, two decades in public education. That's amazing. Um, and, and make sure you're entering that. You can put your bottle down now. If you still have your, your toast raised high, you can set that down and head to the chat and tell these, these folks congratulations. Celebrating 25 years, Karen Crandall, Amber Curry, Marcy Gordon, and Debbie Kimball. That's awesome. 25 years at the ESC. And last, but certainly not least, 30 years of service 
This year, uh, Carla Fry is earning her 30 years as well as Kay Stickdorn. That is incredible. Well done, Carla and Kay, 30 years of service in public education. That is a major milestone achievement. So everyone head to the chat, make sure that you're telling them, hey, um, we'll send your, your congrats to Carla and Kay so that they have that as well. All right. And now I am gonna send it back to Lori. She's got some important videos for us to watch. I really, really don't want to get in an argument about who is the bigger deal. Who's the biggest deal or the big deal? Not sure where we wanna go with that. I know we have a lot of big deal people here. We're very blessed with our big deal people, but I appreciate the competition we have right now between Adam and Kate. So, with that said, now that we've covered all these exciting and earth shattering requirements about timesheets and how to use the kiosk, I think you will find this video to be relevant for us. When we asked Reebok to send us Terry Tate, some people thought we were crazy, but I'm a firm believer in paradigm breaking, outside the box thinking. Hey buddy. <laughs> Break was over 15 minutes ago, Mitch! And since Terry's been with us, our productivity has gone up 46%. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting more from our employees than ever before. You know you need a cover sheet on your TPS reports, Richard! That ain't new, baby! Hey, Janice! Hey, Janice! But what's really impressed me is how Terry's become part of the Felcher family. <laughs> he fits right in here. <laughs> That's a long distance call, Doug. To be honest, I wish Reebok sent us 10 Terry Tates. <laughs> you want to play game scene? Well, it is game time. It's pay time, baby. Woo! So as you can see, that's yeah, really Reebok. not the culture we want to have here at the ESC. A little... Uh, culture of competitiveness on big deal items is, is always welcome, but not the Terry Tate culture. So with that being said, the next video, I think you will find more meaningful to our work and our passion to serve others. I have a lot of memories from when I was a child. One that's always stuck out to me, though, was when I was about 10 years old and I was in school and I struggled. And I, I didn't struggle with English, math, or science. I struggled holding still. And I would try to listen, and focus, and process ideas, but I couldn't help myself. And to be honest, I would sit there, and then I would just start tapping. And the students in the class would look at me, and they'd say, hey, stop tapping. A lot of the time, I didn't even realize I was doing it. And then eventually, even the teachers got after me, and they would yell at me, and they'd say, Clint, you have to stop tapping. It got so bad that I got sent to the principal's office for tapping. And he said to me, okay, maybe when you go back to class, just try sitting on your hands. So I did. I went back to class. And when I felt myself starting to tap, I just, I did this. I sat on my hands. And that worked for about five seconds. One time I was tapping in class and my teacher, Mr. Jensen, looked at me and he yelled. And he said, Clint, stay after class. And I thought to myself, this is it. Like, I am done. Now, I've always been the type of person that believes that a single moment in time can change a person's life. And this was one of those moments for me. And I will never forget it. So I was sitting there with Mr. Jensen and an empty classroom. And he walked past me and he sat next to his desk and he said, Clint, come here. I want to talk to you. And as he looked me right in the eye, he said, no, I need you to know something, you're not in trouble. But I do have just one question that I have to ask you. And he asked, he said, have you ever thought about playing the drums? And in that moment, Mr. Jensen, he leaned back and he opened the top drawer of his desk. And he reached in and he pulled out my very first pair of drumsticks. And he held them in his hands and he looked at me and he said, hey, Clint, you're not a problem. I think you're in trouble. From that moment on, I've never put those six down. I've told
record, recorded, played drums all over the world. My whole college education was paid for with drumsticks in my hand. Just because of a single moment in time that somebody believed in me, and he saw something in me that I didn't even see within myself. And from that moment, I learned that there's a difference between being the best in the world and being the best for the world. I too believe a single moment in time can change a person's life. This school year gives you one more, one more new opportunity to be the best for the world. Be a Mr. Jensen, be the best you can be, be the best for your students, be the best for your districts, be the best for your, the MBSC and your coworkers. I know how I always felt when I was teaching and as a principal and now as a superintendent, I always feel that every year you have a fresh chart start to make a difference in a child's life. And it might not, you might not see a child every day. You might not see a coworker every day. You might not think there's an opportunity there. There is an opportunity to make a difference with a positive attitude, a positive outlook, excitement, all the great verbs you put in the chat room today, caring, supporting, challenging, those are the things you have an opportunity to do every day. I wish you all the best. I know you're going to do another great job again this year. I hope you have a wonderful 21-22 school year and once again make a difference this year. Thanks for attending today. If you have any questions or concerns, drop us an email or phone call. We wish you all the best. Awesome. Thank you, Lori. And thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us this morning. Uh, one last call. If you hadn't signed into the chat yet with your name and department, please do so before you head out. And have a fantastic school year. Take care, everybody.